In the beginning was God. And there was nothing besides God. Neither time, nor space, nor land, nor sea, nor sun, nor moon, nor stars. Neither were there trees, nor plants, nor grasses, nor fishes, nor birds, nor animals of any kind. And there was neither man nor woman. But there was God, the God of heaven, before all time, and before all that was, and before all that is, and before all that ever shall be. And God spoke, and his eternal word went forth, and out of the blank tomb of nothingness the universe was born. And so God created the heavens and the earth. And he created space. And he created the great stars that course through the heavens and the moons that dance around the stars and the comets that soar across the universe. And he created countless planets. But amidst all of these planets, there was only one Earth. Now the Earth was completely formless and wild. And everything on its surface was shrouded in perfect darkness. But the Spirit of God was there, and it moved like a wind over the face of the deep waters. Then God spoke, saying, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And he divided the darkness from the light. And he called the light day, and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God spoke again, making a white canopy of clouds above the earth. And this canopy above the earth he called sky. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God gathered together the waters on the face of the earth until dry land began to appear. And the gathered waters he called the seas. And the dry lands he called earth. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth burst forth with plants of every kind. And suddenly there were plants of every kind straining toward the light of the sky. Green grasses and flowers of every imaginable shape and color. And trees that stretched skyward toward heaven and gave shade to the earth below. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And again God spoke, saying, Let the moon and sun and stars show themselves in the sky above the earth. They will tell the seasons and the time of day and the passing of years. And suddenly the great white canopy of clouds came apart and the blue sky became for the first time visible. 
And now in the daytime sky there appeared the magnificent orange sun. And at night there appeared the serene white moon and a host of twinkling stars. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God spoke, saying, Let the waters bring forth fish, and let there be birds that fly above the earth in the great dome of the heavens. And the great waters blossomed with swarms of living creatures, fish of every kind and giant whales. And the blue sky erupted with hosts of flying birds. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, Let there be animals on the land. And the earth brought forth all the animals. The lowing cattle and the bleating calves, and the ebex and the great eland, and striped cats and spotted leopards, and the roaring lion, the golden monarch of the jungle. And God saw that it was good. And again he spoke, saying, I will make man in my own image, and after my own likeness, and I will set him as steward over all that lives on the earth, over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the sky, and the beasts that roam the earth. And so God formed Adam in his own image out of the very clay of the earth itself. And into his nostrils, God breathed the breath of life. And Adam, made of the clay of the earth and of the Spirit of God, became a living soul, a glorious creature, in whom heaven and earth were wed. And God put Adam in a garden, and out of the ground of the garden there grew every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. There was also the tree of life in the middle of the garden, as well as the tree of knowledge of all things good and evil. Now of this last tree God had spoken to Adam, saying, You can eat the fruit of every tree in the garden except the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That fruit you must not eat, because on the day you eat it, you will die. And as God had named Adam, Adam named each of the creatures that were with him in the garden. And God made Adam responsible for them and for the garden in which they lived, to tend it and to keep it. And although the hosts of animals that were with Adam in the garden each reflected the glory of their Creator in its own way, None of them was anything like Adam. And in time, Adam longed for someone with whom to share the pleasures of the garden. God saw this and said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will give him a partner, a helper fit for him. So God put Adam into a deep sleep. While Adam slept, God took a rib out of him. And out of this rib from Adam, God formed a woman. On seeing her, Adam rejoiced, At long last, the very bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. 
And so God created man in his own image. In the very image of himself he created them, both male and female. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. All that is in the garden is yours to be steward over. I set you over the fishes and the birds and all the living things that move. They are yours to take care of. Then God said, Behold, I give you every seed-bearing plant and every tree-bearing fruit, and to all the animals I give the green plants. And God beheld all that he had created, and it was very good. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all that was in them. And on the seventh day God finished his work and rested. And God blessed the seventh day and set it apart from all the others. heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day and night, without words, without a voice, they declare his glory to the end of the world. Now Adam and Eve rejoiced greatly in the exquisite paradise that God had created for them. But one day the serpent who was the slyest of all the animals in the garden, approached Eve and spoke to her. So I understand that God has forbidden you to eat all of the fruit in the garden. No, Eve said. We can eat all the fruit that we want to eat. It's only the fruit of the tree in the center of the garden that we can't eat, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God has said that if we eat it, we will die. But the serpent spoke again. Ah, yes, he said. Yes, I understand. But you will not die. He only said that because he knows that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods yourselves. Eve considered what the serpent said. She continued to ponder it, and the more she pondered it, the more her interest in the fruit on the tree in the middle of the garden increased. And she came to see that it was indeed very beautiful and good for eating. And she believed what the serpent had said about it making her wise. And so she reached out and she plucked one of the fruits. Then she took it to Adam and told him what the serpent had said, that they would not die if they ate it, and they would be like gods. And so she ate from it. And Adam too saw how beautiful the fruit was and ate from it. And immediately the eyes of both of them were opened and they became conscious of themselves and of their nakedness before each other. And they felt suddenly that they must cover themselves. So they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now God enjoyed the company of Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve greatly enjoyed the company of God. 
They delighted in his presence and he in theirs. But this day, when they heard his voice calling to them in the cool part of the day towards sundown, they experienced a strange fear, and they hid themselves from him behind the lush trees of the garden. God called out, saying, Adam, where are you? Adam finally spoke. When I heard your voice, I became afraid because of my nakedness. So I hid myself from you. Who has told you that you were naked, Adam? God asked him. Have you eaten the fruit of the tree which I forbade you? It was your creation, said Adam. The woman, she gave me the fruit of the tree, and I ate it. And God looked at Eve, who was also hiding behind the tree. What is this you have done, he asked. It was your creation, Eve said, the serpent that you put here in the garden among us. It was he who deceived me, and I ate of the fruit of the tree which you forbade us. Then God spoke to the serpent. Because you have done this, you will be the least of all the animals. Upon your belly you will go, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Then God spoke to Adam and Eve. Because you have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat, the very earth upon which you walk has become condemned. In sorrow you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will bring forth thorns and thistles, and you will toil greatly to produce food until you return to the ground again. For out of the earth you were formed, and to the earth you will return. Then God took pity on the man and woman, and he replaced their coverings of fig leaves and made them clothes from animal skins. And these two creatures, whom he had made of earth in his own image, and who possessed in themselves his very own breath, he sent out of the garden that he had made for them. So Adam and Eve went out into the world to till the ground from which they were made. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, O Lord, and renew right spirit within me, within me.
Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, O Lord, and renew right spirit within me.